okay so even more security features some more things to protect ourselves but right now we will start with a new subject that's called switching security or yes switching security or securing your switches because actually in the upcoming videos i don't know how much will they be but in the upcoming three subjects or three protocols that we will talk and implement all of them need to talk to take it from theoretical side and from the practical side also but anyway all of those three upcoming protocols are for switches only to protect our network to protect our campus or enterprise or company from whatever things that can or maybe whatever evil people or persons or size that want to hack us or maybe interrupt our network by using switches by making use of connectivity to switches because no one connects its computer directly or its server directly to a router this is very rare and that's very rare because of what we know is that routers do have a very low port density so maybe a very expensive router would give me from two to six ports that's it we have talked about it about that a lot of time before so we will connect switches to the router and that should be enough because switches will give me about 24 ports up to 100 ports and i will connect the other network devices to the switch not to the router so that's the point point number one point number two because routers are expensive and have low port density and they are very fast in convergence and in throughput etc so we will lock them away and maybe in the core site only while switches will be distributed everywhere so that people will connect directly to it or devices will be connected directly to switches that's point number two point number three routers are very intelligent and very maybe recursive or what can we call it but the ports of routers you know them by default the ports of routers are down are shut it down we need to unshut each interface alone so that we can operate it that's number one and number two router ports each one of them is separated in a single broadcast domain from the other so whatever you want to do on a single port it will not affect the adjacent port or the other port next to it because they are separated switches yes we love switches yes they are good yes they give us dozens of ports etc but switches they are distributed everywhere i can connect my device directly to a switch of the network and that's it i'm in i'm involved in the network just the one once i receive a dhcp ip address or i assign myself a static ip address that is in the domain that's one of the ip addresses of the domain of the broadcast domain then i'm in port the switch ports are already up by default all the ports are up and operating so once i just connect a single cable an ethernet cable or a fiber optic cable that's it i'm in no need to and to, for any configuration from the switch side you know that this is the big problem and the final one which is the disaster that we used to talk about in chapter two all of chapter two is that all the ports of the switch are under under the same broadcast domain so one single problem on one single interface will make all the others gets affected so the next three protocols will be securing yourself from those unliked or maybe unlovely or cannot be controlled behavior of a switch okay so let's start with the one this one which is port security we will start in one minute Yes, so we will start with port security and port security is very very important protocol to protect yourself yes it does have an ink okay so port security is a new protocol that we will talk about and it's one of the simplest protocols in securing your switches or securing your network from the switches behavior the switches default behavior that we cannot change which is the broadcast domain and it's already up and up etc I shut it but anyway so port security is a very important protocol that will protect your switch or your switch ports each port individually from making anyone or allowing anyone to connect directly you know that just a few minutes ago we, we i said that anyone can insert or inject its ethernet cable or maybe whatever type of cable in a switch and that's it i'm connected i'm in okay because it's already up and it's already shared in broadcast. Port security is not about shutting down ports or interfaces. No, all interfaces will be up. But we will inform this switch that do not accept whomever wants to connect to you and then and under any interface. You see? 
and this is done by using MAC addresses. I will inform the switch that only accept maybe MAC address number 1, 2, and 3, and only those, those three MAC addresses are allowed to connect to the switch under whatever interface, but only those three are allowed to connect under the switch, to the switch, I'm sorry. You see? This is very important. So now, maybe I'm in the room, this is my lab, my network, and I know that all the devices that are connected here to my switch are maybe my end uh, device, my computer, maybe I have a server, maybe I have a router, another switch or a hub, etc. That's it. So what I need is that to uh, is only to add their MAC addresses as trusted MAC addresses to the switch and whatever other MAC addresses that wants to come and connect themselves and whatever other type of device that wants to come just and connect themselves to the switch they will not be accepted at all, no matter what they do. They cannot hack me, they cannot interrupt the network, they cannot connect and become part of the network just because they don't have valid or allowed or trusted MAC addresses. This is number one. So it's a limitation, you know, because switch ports to connect you immediately. This is a big problem, actually. It has cons more than pros. And a limitation is needed, and that limitation may be only the assigned MAC addresses are allowed to connect or maybe you just just don't want to mention number of MAC addresses but we want to mention maybe a number of learned MAC addresses so like I trust or accept the first 10 MAC addresses connected to you and that's it MAC address number 11 will be prohibited will be denied or, or I'm sorry will be violated okay so this doesn't depend on a certain MAC address or who will be connected and who will not be connected or will not be allowed to enter the switch or the network but we can just mention a number of MAC addresses. The first 10, when I say a MAC address, trust only 10 MAC addresses. The first 10 that comes in the morning or at whatever time and connect themselves to the switch. What are those? Maybe those are 10 already. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Number 10. Whatever first 10 people or end devices or whatever network devices connect themselves to the switch, all of them are accepted, no matter what MAC addresses they have. Don't care about it, okay? But number 11, when he comes and wants to connect itself or himself to the switch, it will be violated. It will not be allowed to. So, port security is about limiting the MAC addresses that are connected. You see MAC addresses only, MAC addresses, because it switches, and switches do understand only MAC addresses and frames. And that limitation is either the number of learned MAC addresses or we mention, we statically mention a desired or a specific MAC address or we can also perform both maybe what do you mean by both I mean that I can allow 10 MAC addresses as a maximum to be allowed to be connected to the switch but at the same time I will mention three static MAC addresses so from the 10 allowed three are certain mentioned and other random seven are allowed also okay so three static plus some seven dynamically learned that will come in the future, whatever other seven, the total will be 10 and that's it. No 11 will be allowed. Good. So this is how I guarantee that maybe the boss, the monitoring system, the team leader, or maybe another um, administrator, all of them will connect no matter what happens. Okay, this is something. And another seven are allowed also to connect. So this is very important and this is all the concept actually, this is all the benefit of MAC address, the port security protocol. But you need to notice two important or three important things which are, number one is that all Cisco switch ports, Cisco switch ports, we are in the Cisco course, I don't have any idea what happened, what's happened, what, uh, what happens in the other vendor switches, are assigned as dynamically by, dynamic by default which means that all those ports do learn MAC addresses by default and their layer 2 status, those ports, layer 2 status is called dynamic, dynamic desirable and dynamic auto. This is something related with the old CCNA, some extra details, okay? But anyway, dynamic behavior or the dynamic status of, which is the default status of the switch ports of the Cisco, they do not accept the enabling or the operation of port security protocol. We need to change the status of the ports to make them access ports. After that, 
we can assign or we can enable the port security protocol and add the sticky MAC addresses or maybe the static assigned MAC addresses or the number limit the number of the learned MAC addresses, etc. So this is note number one. Number two is that those static ports, when I assign a MAC address statically and I allowed a MAC address statically, they do not have Typers. You remember the first video in chapter two. I talked about the switching behavior and MAC address learning and MAC table, etc. And I said that in order to prevent making the MAC table become fully and that will freeze the lookup engine of a switch, the switch will clear all the inactive MAC addresses every 300 seconds, every five minutes. When you assign a static MAC address or you trust a static MAC address in a switch, that's it. It will be trusted forever. And that's not good. Maybe you'll start to trust a lot of MAC addresses and that will become cumulative. They will become 10, 50, 100. This is number one. And number two, maybe they will become useless with time. Maybe after one week or even one month, I'm sorry, etc. Or, or at any timing, maybe after 48 hours, anyway this trusted MAC address is left, it's gone. Maybe you have a lab for boot camps. Maybe you are an instructor and you want to build a lab so, so that you have students like maybe 10 to 20 students and you want to teach them. Those will teach, maybe you need to trust their ports, their computers maybe only, you trust only the MAC addresses of their computers to be connected to your lab or your network maybe to protect yourself. And after that, they will go and they will finish their bootcamp or their lesson in a week and that's it. So you need either to log in the device and delete all their MAC addresses or you can just give it a timer. So we need to add assign timers. So we need to give aging timers just like the dynamic behavior for all those static MAC addresses, statically learned MAC addresses. So this is rule number two or note number two. Number three, the static, statically assigned MAC addresses can be also called, it's not always, but can be also called sticky because assigning a static MAC address can, can be performed in two ways or two methods. Method number one uh, is that I can mention, I can type by using the keyboard the certain or this very MAC address that I want to trust. So it's either I will ask you about your MAC address, you will um, give to me the MAC address, I will write it down in the command and that's it, it's trusted. This is number one. Number two, which is called sticky, is that you will connect your device to my switch and I know who you are and you are trusted. I will log into the device and say MAC address, switch port, port security, MAC address sticky. That means the MAC address that you have just learned and connected to, this is trusted. I don't need to mention the MAC address, the certain MAC address number. What I need only is that to type sticky and that's it. It will say that you just connected to me and you are trusted. I will copy your MAC address automatically and add it to the statically learned MAC addresses. So this is method number two. I believe in the lab we will do as much as we can of all those things, maybe all of them. Let's see. But one final thing we need to talk about before moving out of this video is that Trusting MAC addresses, trusting certain MAC addresses, sticky MAC addresses, uh, giving aging timers, etc. All those details, all those things that we have been talking about, limiting the number of MAC addresses, maybe only 10, and that's it. Okay, so now we are done, now we are ready, now our lab is ready. Uh, 10 people are connecting to our switch, all of them are granted access, all of them are done, everyone is here, that's it, we have no problem. What will happen when MAC number 11 connects? A Mac that is not allowed, maybe uh, that we have no room for it because we are full, 10 out of 10. That if we are, that's ha that happens if we use the learning, the I'm sorry, the limiting the number of learned Mac addresses, or maybe we did just only mention the statically Mac addresses as trusted and any other Mac address is denied. So this denial, what will happen once? an untrusted MAC address connects to our switch. What will happen is called a violation, which is the action that the switch will perform automatically and immediately once some MAC address or MAC addresses tries to connect to the switch and those are not allowed to connect. So the behavior that will the switch perform towards the rules of the port security is called violation and violation or the behavior of the switch can be one out of three 
behaviors on one out of three reactions reaction number one is to shut down the entire interface the very interface that someone connected its ethernet to or you can just imagine the big disaster of this is my switch this is port number one it's connected to another switch you see and this other switch have all those six people allowed here i'm not enabling or i will not enable port security port security on this switch i will enable it on this one the main switch number one and i will enable port security inside port fast ethernet zero one what i will enable like is that it's either i will mention the six mac addresses trust them only or i will limit the number of dynamically learned mac addresses to become maximum of six for this interface what will happen is that there is no port security here there is no violation here and someone comes just and attach its device and sends a frame of its mac address to this interface you see so there is no problem here nothing will happen here but he wants maybe to grant access to the main network or get, get an internet service then of course this frame will go this way out of this port and trying to enter this port and there is a port security here and this port security by default says shut down see the default behavior is to shut down the interface that received the frame that is not trusted or allowed to access and shutting down this interface caused me to lose all the switch and all those six trusted devices have lost connectivity to the network and lost internet connection this is a big problem so it's all also about designing and about when or the correct place to configure port security because this is the default behavior of shutdown this is not something mandatory this is not something like our destiny just we can change it that's it no this is only the default behavior of switch port and we can change it very simply in a single and simple command that we will see in the lab and we can change the default behavior to become either protect or strict both protect and strict reactions are about when you receive an untrusted frame, just don't accept it. That's it. Just when you receive an unwanted frame or untrusted frame at this interface, just discard this specific frame and that's it. No other one will be, no any other device or any other MAC address will be affected by that. This is very beautiful and that's it. We have solved the big problem. But if both of them are about to discard the frame, then what's the difference between them? Number one, protect. What it does is that it discards the frame silently. And what I mean by frame is that you know show logging. We talked about syslog that it shows you everything from emergency up to debug or informative. So even very simple and obvious information or logs are appeared in the syslog informations. So when using the protect criteria or the protect violation reaction, what will happen is that this device, this switch, when it receives an untrusted MAC address, I'm sorry, or a frame, it will drop it silently without anyone knows and without even logging or adding a log message or appearing a log message that says that I did discard an unwanted or untrusted frame or a MAC address you see so you will have a, not just you nobody will have any idea if there is someone trying to connect to our network okay that's it number two the strict what it will do is that it will do the same behavior of just discarding the frame but it will log it in a log message and it will show you that MAC address, this specific MAC address, have been discarded, okay, or have been violated. This is very important. You see the difference between two of them? Just in case you want to know, maybe this switch will not be monitored, so let's make it protect because no one will monitor it or troubleshoot it. Or if you are about or caring about troubleshooting or monitoring and want to know the MAC addresses that are trying to access your network, maybe on purpose, maybe they want to hack you, then you should enable the strict. Uh, violation option okay so this is all the concept and what you need to know and all the options of the port security in the upcoming video let's perform a big lab and maybe let's see what can we do all about maybe we'll limitate the, the number of mac addresses on a switch maybe we'll make a sticky or a static lesson mac addresses and let's hope for luck uh, to Help us and performing all of those so i hope this video is clear just in case it wasn't you know where to comment down below in the video you can subscribe and channel and ask whatever questions you want regarding everything in the networking and, and i'm sorry and in the ccna course 
and just after you complete this video please jump to the upcoming video and we when we will perform a lab for post security so thanks for your timing and i hope to see you in the upcoming video goodbye